www.thebarbershow.com
um, was it sitting there that day and it doesn't have a dog in his life, but he could tell you he was sitting there eating his hamburger at lunch. Um, he's uh, retired military and retired from SRS, had security clearance there. Um, said this guy said there were people gathered across the way and there's a bar across the street from this location. Um, what happened is the guy came running in and said there after me and ran into the bathroom. The trash can that the marijuana was found at was adjacent to the bathroom door, which was away from the bar at the time that this occurred. They also found the methamphetamine in the bottom of the trash can under a bag as well. Um, my client and I've talked with Mr. Elam and, and he's willing to get rid of whatever the cut or whatever that the, the powders the, the vitamins and caffeine that he sells and is willing to do that and I think we've talked about doing a six month probation based upon that condition. Well, we do. The motion can be split up where it's only effective as to the commissioners or it can be applicable to both the commissioner and the mayor. I understand what we can do. My question was that was a unit that means if it passes the way it is, that means it will include everybody that travels. Is that right? My understanding the way it reads is it only says commission, it does not include the mayor. Okay, so the mayor and the commission is not being unit, is that what you're telling me? So the, 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 the rules don't say that? The rules do show that the mayor is part of the commission, but it's my understanding from the previous discussion that we had on this item that the intent was not to include the mayor. Okay, I need, I need somebody to make a motion of some kind to get, get, get off center. Mr. Lockett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I hope you will give me a little leeway with this. Uh, I want to attempt to refute the erroneous allegations that have been made relative to commission travel for educational purposes. I'm a firm believer in being uh, becoming uh, better educated. Uh, I have, as the media have said on about a hundred occasions, traveled extensively during my five plus years on the commission. But what gets me, I, my, my colleague, uh, I think has good intentions. We all want to save the government money. But Mr. Chairman, as you've indicated, if you don't go in there and see different things, network, you tend to do the same thing over and over at home. And I think this is one of those problems that we have. And Mr. Chairman, if I could, I would just like to talk about just a few of those accomplishments that I have done to better this government, even though some have not been implemented, but it's still there. Mr. Lockett, let me say this. I understand what you, where you're coming from, but to reiterate what you brought, and I think you brought some great ideas, we'll, we'll, I want to focus on, on, on this agenda item as far as we're going to pass it to, to do it or not. I don't want to get into what you did or did not do because I, I don't want to start a debate on that. Um, I need a motion as to how we either going to vote it up or vote it down or going to be inclusive uh, or not. The, the, the commission don't stand alone when it comes to travel. I disagree with my attorney like I always do, but I disagree with what he said. When you call, when you talk about travel, you got to include, you can't be in sometime and out sometime. If we're going to do this, we got no problem with it. But we need to vote it up or down, and it's going to include everybody. Go ahead, Mr. Lock, as long as you're not going to try to act. Well, no, Mr. Chairman, if, uh, you don't want me to talk about these things. What I, was, what I was trying to do is I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but what I was attempting to do was to show that oftentimes we go on this travel, we bring good things back to this community. And Before I you all probably staff was uh, Melanie Wilson in reference to there was a list of over 200 properties that were actually up for demolition. Well, uh, since that time, I've actually met, met with planning and development in regards to that listing of properties. Based on the funding that we have, we actually have a couple of pots of funding in which we feel are act is actually eligible to assist with that listing of over 200 properties. Uh, uh, with the CDBG funding, of course, it has to be used in areas that are actually considered blight 
on areas of considered low to moderate income personnel, as well as we also have a pot of funding via um, you know, a bond funding. But of course, that funding has to be used also within the Lane and Walker Bethlehem area. So to your point, uh, we have begun that discussion. I have compiled a list of properties within the confines of our funding that we have that we believe are on that list that we believe we can assist the planning and development department because as you indicated, it's a partnership. And that list actually will be provided to Madam Administrator once she approves we move forward. Outstanding. Mr. Rocha, um, we were reprogramming $280,000. Yes, sir. Uh, how much money and when did that come in from the federal government to assist us with that? I guess, what, what's the total amount and when will we get the, the, the next allotment? Uh, well, two part question there. Uh, to first answer your question, um, basically what you have, there were some agencies that actually didn't meet the performance goals. So what you actually have, and this happens over a number of years, so what you have is you have some agencies who actually give money back, some agencies who we make the commitment, but they don't even actually use the money. So you have this excess funding that's in your account. Well, with that being said, you know, we have what is called a, a timing and standard in which we actually have to spend X amount of dollars by October 31st. So actually what we've done here is what's the highest and best use to be able to expand some of this money by the October 31st timeline. As Ms. Johnson indicated, you know, the rehabilitation program, that's money we have persons, we don't have a waiting list, but we have people calling every day. We know we can expend funding there. And then also you have the project with our CSR EOA. That's a great partnership for the city. Why? Because that's the agency there that actually was able to go before the state Department of Community Affairs, and they were committed, the state committed $841,000 to their cause. Well, they're short. Well, you know, with them being short, if they already have 841,000, you know, we have the latitude and the ability to be able to put in 180,000 plus or minus to that project to help it come to fruition. And I, and I understand that. And the reason my question was that when money is reprogrammed, our money is not spent. And if we don't know that as a body, uh, and it sits there, and we end up turning the money back in, or we end up saying we need to reprogram and put it in a certain direction. As administrative chairman, and you and I have several talks, and I plan to, to make sure that we communicate so we can keep the funds coming and working so we can do the thing that we uh, set on our radar to do to, to get done. Whether it be what Ms. Nasaya said, what happened with uh, uh, denominated properties, or whether it be uh, uh, rehabbing. I, I, I meet people every day who want to ask me about, you know, are they, are they got a paint program? I mean, can I get my house fixed up? Can, I mean, what, what, what does it take? Uh, uh, I send you a lot of business. I hope y'all don't get overwhelmed, but I send you a lot of business because people come to me about that. And that's what their money is for. And we need, they need to know that the program is there. And if they meet the guidelines, they ought to be, to be, to, to, to be accepted in that. In that. Uh, is that a new staff person beside Ms. Johnson, my old friend, but who's the new staff person? Is that a new staff person? I'll let her introduce herself. Okay, well, she had to say it, but I was trying to figure out can she talk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, I can. Uh, my name is Akeisha Anderson, and um, I'm the Mr. Dennis, what do you mean? 
Let me make this comment and then I'm looking at Dennis. But um, with all of the groups we got working in, and, and what to Mr. Pernod credit about the demolition, I don't feel personally that we all could be tearing down someone else's home because it's just dilapidated. If they own it, I think it's their responsibility to do something with it. And because we spend money tearing down, we'll do it like what he just said. We had an empty lot sitting around where we done went in and tore down somebody's property. But, and I guess the code enforcement, somehow we got to put something in place where if you own that property, it's your responsibility. And if you turn it over to the city, if we own that property, then and I got no problem with doing something with it then. But I don't want to spend any money on somebody else's property and they, they, and they want to cut the grass on it. So if they, if they didn't do that, we got to be very careful, I think. And the, the old something nuts and bolts down the road again that we have to talk about and make sure that we're moving forward and we're not just repeating the same same thing. Uh, Dennis, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to receive as the information. Thank you. Second. Got a motion to call second. All in favor, let it be known by no second vote. Second. 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 what we created in two other entities in this city. I'm not going to call them the, 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 the departments. But then we don't know nothing at, at all, really. And we at the mercy. And the city saying, well, we don't have any money. We can't do nothing. And the enterprise who we can't touch is doing well. So I want to make sure that we do something, but at the same time, we got to know that this body, whoever is here, great might be in 2025, but I, I, I'm going to be gone. So the great is here, he needs to know that he voted on something that he can still have an input on and know if the, this taxpayer is going to be doing it beneficial versus doing it like we had in the past. I'm not saying enterprise is not as, as bad, but, but I got some issue with that myself. And maybe that's some of the things, some of the issues, I mean, we probably can, I think the, uh, another question was if you ever get caught up. <laughs> the thing with maintenance is it's continuous. Um, uh, you may get to a, a peak point and then you level off, but you, you're constantly going to have, um, you, you, if you're developing, you have more uh, uh, stormwater structures and uh, um, features. So you're adding more to your inventory. And so that's, there's more that you have to do. So uh, the fee would actually never run. Okay, but that's in a, in a nutshell. My last question, Bill, this is my last one. The new structure, infrastructure, new building that take place, whether it be in any part of Augusta, south, east, west, or okay, what part, are uh, the guidelines set up now where they have to, because what we got in the south side of the county has not been the same as uh, the other parts where there's no sidewalk, no drainage, I mean, no, no, no curbing, water running through the yard and running to the next yard to the next yard. So we need to put them in place so we will never catch up. If we don't put them in place where the, where the, the new subdivision, the, the stuff that's built, it's built to the standard that we can be able to make sure that it's going to be able to work with what we got or we can keep coming behind ourselves. So that's my next that's, question. Can just kind of piggyback on what you just said. That's, that's all part of the program. When we initially started the program, we put it in to update um, uh, people to create um, a stormwater manual, design manual, and to have certain standards and everything that in, in, in that particular uh, manual. So, supports the safety and the welfare that did not cost the city anything. But when you have brought up um, tearing down black buildings, I'll, I'll be in support of that. I'm in support to where I'm going to represent the district, represent Augusta as best as I can. And I listen to my colleagues when they talk about their areas. And 
I'm just here just hoping that my colleagues will understand where I'm going, not in a negative way, nor do, do I live when I do listen to you. I don't look at it in a negative way. I'm willing to support you and understand my needs and wants for the area and the district eight. Just district eight's complicated. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion um, that we uh, res be respectful of the, uh, the public outreach meeting that um, the engineering department has outlined here at a particular time. Let's move forward with the information meeting and we establish the, uh, uh, the fee concrete at the end of the information section. Second. services to those areas to give us numbers as to what it would cost. So to do what was originally asked by the body was scrap tire collection, two tires every week on every collection day, just like we used to. For advanced disposal, that was $63,000 a month. And for inland services, it was $13,000 a month. When you start multiplying that out, that's about $930,000 a year, which equates to about $15.94 per home on 62,000 units. That's what the cost would have to change in your solid waste collections program to afford that two tires per house per cycle. To the contrary, the events recycling program costs us $750 a month to host that event for $9,000 a year. $930,000? $9,000. So one's $14.94 and one's 15 cents. So while the program isn't working to everybody's satisfaction and we still have some issues on the street, the cost benefit is dynamically different. So the real question is, how do we go from here? Where do we go from here? That was this first ever scrap tire amnesty day. If you're a Richmond County resident or theoretically even business, we would take your scrap tires for free at the landfill or one or two additional sites kind of like a collection event, but we'll take them free with the exclusion of if you're in the tire industry. No tire processors, sellers, resellers, because you've already gained profits for that. 
the theory there would be if we take some of the restrictions off and allow both business and non-business residential, then we get a lot of those tires off the street, as many as we can. And then the second part of this is we're going back, Commissioner Lockett proposed an idea and we've looked at it and we think it can work or it adds value. And we at least want to try a pilot program. We want to try a 90 day pilot program where we still stay events based, but we pay $2 per tire up to those five tires. So that somebody who shows up to an event could end up with $10 in their pocket as they walk away. The cash management is the greatest concern for me, and we will work closely with finance. If this is adopted, we would work closely with finance between now and the April event, because that's when that pilot program would start, is to develop the means and the systems of managing the cash to get that program started. We think that by offering some level of incentive could bring additional tires in. We already know the baseline. We already know 7.6 to 7.7 .7 tons per event. If we open it up and we allow commercial and business to bring tires for free, we'll then know a new number, how many tires are available. And then if we go for a compensation program, then we then will know what can addition to that baseline and we'll have a good understanding of how effective that program is.